Hi, I'm Scott with BibleStudying.net, and we've been talking about the modern church views that are out there today and their understanding of the gospel, and we've, we're comparing that to see how well we're doing in terms of whether or not it meets the, the New Testament definition of the gospel, which is so important that we can't change. So real quick, we already saw that from the New Testament that the old, there were two basic um, pre aspects of the gospel um, beyond simply that we receive it through Jesus' death and resurrection and the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus, but that the gospel necessarily included that we would receive an earthly inheritance that had been promised to Abraham, an earthly kingdom uh, that would replace the other kingdoms that would be under heaven, that would be on the earth, and two, that the Jews who had, who had been promised this kingdom um, would receive it, and that Gentiles could also now become fellow citizens of that kingdom and fellow heirs of that earthly promise that was made to Abraham. Those were the two aspects. We already looked at covenant theology, and we saw that their view in amillennialism was that this idea of an earthly kingdom was was not correct in their understanding. They spiritualized it instead, and they, and they said that, no, what we receive instead, both Jews and Gentiles receive an eternal heavenly inheritance. So they've changed something that the New Testament says we cannot change, that, that the New Testament itself doesn't change, and they've, they've changed something that God says he wasn't going to change, according to Hebrews. So that was the, that's the uh, major view that's out there in the churches today. Um, and then the alternative, which we just started to talk about, is traditional dispensationalism, which was held by basically the rest of the, the modern denominations that we have, especially here in the United States. Traditional dispensationalism differs from covenant theology because it believes that the Jews and the Gentiles don't receive the same thing. Uh, and so let's, let's, def let's let uh, some of these texts define this. Um, Wikipedia says, Dispensational premillennialism, a millennial reign of the Messiah over the Jews, entered, uh, centered in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, dispensational Christ and the people of Israel will reign in Jerusalem for a thousand years. So we can see from that last quote that there's an emphasis in traditional dispensationalism on the reception of earthly, uh, earthly promises and an earthly kingdom by the Jews, by Israel. See how they're, they're, they're associating it with Israel only. They're not saying anything about what the Gentiles receive. The New Testament says the Gentiles can be part of this, fellow citizens, fellow heirs. Um, they're saying Jew, the Jews get this kingdom. Um, and so this is from another, from a covenant theology point of view, talking about the opposition point of view, traditional dispensationalism. They say the core of the system is their untenable insistence to take the Bible literally. Uh, obviously they have... <laughs> Uh, problem with that. Most who hold to traditional dispensationalism do not believe that there is one way of salvation, rather that the Bible contains two distinct paths of salvation, one for the Jews and a separate and unequal plan for the Gentiles. And that's true. That's what traditional dispensationalists believe. They believe that the Jews get this earthly kingdom, but the Gentiles get a heavenly inheritance. The next quote here is from uh, wikipedia.org. It says, um, to dispensationalism, dispensationalists object to Roman Catholicism and to covenant theology because they do not view the church as, as the promised covenant and kingdom in the Old Testament prophecy. They believe that such a kingdom is still promised to the Jews. Not to the Gentiles, just to the Jews. Uh, and this is uh, a quote from a... a a Christian website that's talking about the same issue that we're talking about in this video, and they're talking about how this originated and where this came from, and it says that uh, in prophecy, this is from a quote from uh, John Nelson Darby, which we already saw was one of the people who first initiated uh, this, this view of traditional dispensationalism, and it's, it's in his own words, and this is Darby now describing how this works. He says, in prophecy, when the Jewish church or nation is concerned, there we look for plain and direct testimony because the earthly things were for the Jews' proper portion. On the contrary, when the address is to the Gentiles, we look for a symbol because earthly things were not their portion. When facts are addressed to the Jews, I look for plain, common sense, literal statement. On the other hand, when the church, uh, as the church was a system of grace and heavenly hopes, it symbolizes by analogous agency. So here's Dar Darby, uh, one of the or uh, originators of this entire system of traditional dispensationalism, saying, the Jews get earthly things, the Gentiles get heavenly things. Um, and this last quote here is from, uh, again, on the same topic. It was a debate between someone who holds to traditional dispensationalism and someone who holds um, to the position that we're going to uh, argue for here in a second. And this is the person tr expressing traditional dispensationalism. He says, um, the church is a distinct body. The church is that which has the heavenly hope. Nowhere in the Old and New Testament is the church seen as an earthly kingdom people. Israel is God's earthly centerpiece of God's plan. The church is a heavenly people. We have no final hope except in heaven. So that's from Dr. Mal Couch, who's uh, worked at Tyndale Theological Seminary. 
And so he's expressing there the, the central uh, aspect of traditional dispensationalism, which is that uh, the church, which he says is, a, is a, as I said here, the church is a distinct body for this dispensation made up of Jews and Gentiles. That's what Couch says. He says, we receive a heavenly uh, inheritance. That is the core belief of dispensationalism. And so that's those two major views. There's a very small, minor, third-party position uh, besides those, and we're going to read that. It's, it's called kiliasm. We've all seen so many different terms for it, millenarianism, apocalypticism, maybe earlier terms. Today it's sometimes called progressive dispensationalism. And so th this is a very, very, very small minority view today, but it was the majority view of the church for the years, um, the centuries prior to Augustine. And it, in fact, holds that both Jews and Gentiles receive together the same thing, an earthly promised inheritance or kingdom. That's exactly what the New Testament talks about. It's interesting because we see that for several hundred years prior to Augustine, the church held to a very plain understanding of the New Testament statements, which plainly teach an earthly inheritance for Jews and Gentiles. And so this is from Wikipedia. It says, the premillennialist view appeared in the available writings of the early church and it was evident um, the premillennial beliefs of the early church fathers are quite different from the modern view of today, which is traditional dispensationalism. Why? Because the early church fathers believed that the Gentiles and Jews of the Old and New Testament periods both received this earthly uh, inheritance, um, whereas traditional dispensationalists today believe that uh, the, the church period, since Pentecost, neither Jews nor Gentiles saved during that period will receive an earthly inheritance. They receive a heavenly inheritance. So pretty big difference there. This is uh, also... From Wikipedia, it says, The concept of a temporary earthly messianic kingdom at the Messiah's coming was not an invention of Christianity. It was a theological interpretation developed within the apocalyptic literature of Judaism. For the larger part, Christian eschatology through the 2nd and 3rd centuries was kiliastic. Many early Christian interpreters applied earlier Jewish apocalyptic ideas of a temporary earthly, uh, of a temporary messianic kingdom to their interpretation of chapter 20 of John's Revelation or Apocalypse. Justin Martyr, Arrhenius, and Tertullian all make explicit references to a concept of an earthly kingdom at Christ's coming. So that's the early church view. Um, the next portion of this says that historical classic premillennialism is distinctly non-dispensational. It's not like disp dispensational uh, views that we've talked about earlier. Uh, it sees no radical theological distinction between Israel and the church. Historic premillennialism maintains kiliasm, which means they believe in a literal thousand-year period on, of, of, uh, of the kingdom on earth and the reception of that by the Jews and the Gentiles together. And so we can see they're upholding this New Testament concept, the, the reality that the, the church of Israel, as it's used in the Septuagint, the Old Testament people of God, now can incorporate and can have Gentiles receiving the promises and the kingdom that they were promised. And so this last quote here under millennialism uh, from Wikipedia says, um, held by Christian denominations of a golden age or paradise on earth, um, and they, it says, millenarian beliefs have fallen into disfavor in mainstream Christian theology today. Obviously, we've already seen that. Uh, he says this was not the case during the early Christian centuries. At least during the first four centuries, this view was normative in both the East and the West. Tertullian, Commodian, Lactanaceous, Methodius, Apollinarius, of Laodicea all advocated the premillennial view, the view of the church and the Jews, the Christians, the Gentiles and the Jews together would receive earthly inheritance. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about Justin and Arrhenius. Um, and Arrhenius points out that the first opponent of this earthly inheritance view shared by Jews and Gentiles together was Marcion, a second century uh, heretic, a Gnostic heretic. Um, and so it goes on to say that, uh, that this view, that Jews and Gentiles together receive an earthly inheritance, uh, became universally condemned in the fourth century church. It was a decidedly minority view later. Um, and then it, obviously beginning with Augustine, it, it began to be removed entirely and it has been predominantly since then. So let's go ahead and stop there. We'll come, up, come back and do our summary in just a second.